If this guy did this anywhere else in the world, in an urban red light district, he'd wind up in the hospital, quickly. Three weeks ago, I was in Manila, and I saw a story on TV about a ladyboy riot in Bangkok. Some Thai trans women got into a heated fight against Filipino trans women in Bangkok yesterday. But the DFA said they are now seeking immediate departure from Thailand. It was a busy week for bad boys in Thailand that week. Well, boys and lady boys. In Phuket, there was a longtime expat resident there, a Swiss guy, uh, who apparently had done pretty well. He had a few businesses and he owned a beachfront property. And uh, there was a local woman who had gone to the beach, I suppose, and she was sitting on his front steps. That apparently annoy annoyed him, and he kicked her off. He literally kicked her off. He kicked her in the back and kicked her off the steps. And like everything we do these days, there's somebody around with a video camera, and they caught it on video. And it turned out that the young woman that this dopey Swiss guy decided to literally kick off his steps was, uh, was a doctor. She was a physician and a well-respected woman in the community. Well, the community was up in arms, and they demanded this guy's deportation. Well, it turns out he's going to have the same result as the Lady Boys. Immediate departure from Thailand. Well, okay, it's not exactly the same result. He's fighting it. But I have a suspicion that there's yodeling going to be happening in his future pretty soon. <laughs> Later that very same week, up in Isan, in northern Thailand, another Swiss dude, what is it with these Swiss dudes, was in a supermarket and got in an argument with a local woman there, and he beat the crap out of her. I mean, he really tuned her up. Well, he's going to jail before he gets deported. What a smart move on his part. Sure enough, to top it all off, back in Phuket, two brothers from New Zealand, these two Kiwi guys, got in an altercation with a traffic cop, a police sergeant of all things. Well, they overpowered him and disarmed him. And like everybody else in this uh, strange melee, it was on video. <laughs> it's, uh, I think that the Swiss, I'm sorry, the Kiwi siblings are going to wind up possibly meeting the Swiss guy from the supermarket altercation in their new residences in the confines of some Thai jail somewhere before they too are deported back to the land of hobbits. <laughs> so when I got back to Bangkok, I came here to visit my friend Dennis. That you see Dennis over there. Hey Dennis. <laughs> he manages the joint. And I was just sitting here on the veranda for the dollhouse, uh, the name of the bar here. And this is on a short lane known as Soy Cowboy. And I was just sitting here watching the world go by. It's a very interesting place to do that. I mean, you know, you got all sorts of interesting goings on happening here any time of the day or night. And I noticed this guy about my age, I say around 70 years old, very well dressed with a white shirt and tan slacks, well groomed, and he's kind of sauntering down the street with a big old smile on his face. Now, as you can see over there, what the uh, bar owners do is they bet they put their best PR girls out in front. And what the PR girls do is they hold up a sign with the price of uh, the price of the drinks, and they try to entice people to come into the bar. It's pretty simple stuff, right? Well, this guy kind of stops at the girls next door here. And, you know, they perk up. They think, oh, well, we got a customer coming. And they perk up, start paying attention to him. And he speaks perfect Thai, as far as I can tell. And he's speaking with them. And what he says to them almost knocked me off my stool. What he says is, I wouldn't go in there with you because you sleep with too many men. And you smell. Only he didn't say you smell. He said your private part smell. And he used a word in Thai that is equivalent to the C word in English. Now two of the girls just turned and quickly walked away. And one of them was furious and gave him the finger and told him to F off. Well, 
He didn't bat an eyelash. He kept smiling. He slowly turned and sauntered down the street. Now, the bar directly behind me attached to, cow, uh, to a dollhouse is a ladyboy bar. He didn't stop there. I guess he didn't want to get his teeth knocked out. But he stopped at the one after it and apparently ran the same act in front of that. Now, I couldn't hear him from here. But... I could see the body language and what was going on. And this guy, who apparently has lived in Thailand long enough to speak fluent Thai, gets shits and giggles for walking in a place like this and demeaning the people that work here. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, it's like, who, would do, who, do, who does such a thing? If this guy did this anywhere else in the world, in an urban red light district, he'd wind up in the hospital quickly. This kind of speaks to what Thailand's about, that that doesn't happen to him here. So, of those four rather unwise decisions on the part of foreigners living in Thailand, living in a foreign country, the one that I find the most disturbing, believe it or not, is the one that isn't, I don't think, criminal behavior. That guy on Soy Cowboy, you know, he was doing that with, with, with intent. You know, he set it up to do that. He went there for the purpose of demeaning people in a really kind of nasty way. And it's like, the other three incidences, while not the smartest things in the world to do, you can make an argument that they, they were done in the heat of passion. And I mean, even, even in a court of law, in a, you know, in a legal setting, that makes a difference in terms of the outcomes of sentences and things like that. You know, it's taken into consideration that people do dumb stuff when they're angry sometimes. You know, the guy on Soy Cowboy was just an evil creep. I mean, ooh. But hey, what, you know, what's the point of all this? It's like, I live in Thailand for a lot of reasons. I, I like it here for a number of reasons, but high on the list of my reasons for living here is the culture. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not an aggressive culture. You know, they, uh, if they're, you know, they have disagreements, of course, and even confrontations, but it's built into their software, into their culture, that the best way to solve something is without aggression and without, certainly without violence. And they, they really strive to do that. Now they have their limits, you know, even, even Thai people get in fights sometimes, but it's way more rare here. And in everyday interactions, people are just quicker to smile and give you a why, you know, and, and e even when they're a little annoyed with you. Now you can ter interpret that as passive aggression if you want, but you know, it, it works for me. It's, it's, it's just a more, peaceful society. And like I said, that's high on the list of my reasons for wanting to stay here. You know, I've done dumb stuff in my life as well, nothing dumb enough to get arrested for, but, um, you know, it's, it, the point is, is I, I, I could lose my temper at times, or at least get, you know, get a little bit annoyed at things. And what I do is I quickly remind myself, I, I try to, I, I try to, you know, interfere with those impulses with thoughts of, hey, you're in a peaceful place, you know, emulate this culture. It's, it's a better way of life. So if you're coming here, try to install that in your software before you arrive, especially if you're planning on spending long, long, a long time here. And uh, yeah, sabai sabai is what the Thais say, which means relax, I guess is a simple, simple enough translation of that. And uh, or, or chill. I like that. Let's just say Sabai Sabai means hey, chill. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.